We are back and our guest today, Jason Lomolino, is from a small town here in California, but they're having a big impact with something cool called Jesus Burgers. Hello. <laughs> so we're going to get into what that is in just a little bit. But Jason, you are the lead pastor yeah. at Isla Vista Church, but you didn't grow up thinking that that was kind of going to be your, your path. Tell us a little uh, bit yeah. about you know, your know. childhood. and. Yeah, thank you guys for having me on. Oh, Real dude, honor. Thanks for being here, bro. Um, well, I was born in San Diego and uh, just got in all sorts of problems down there. Started drinking at 12 and just kind of had my run with the party life and the scene and stuff. And yeah, it was just up to no good. And then at the age of 20, I was just really kind of tired of what I was doing and uh, pretty burnt out on the scene. But no one knew it. You know, you know how to hide that stuff. I always were just the guy at the party. And so I move up to Santa Barbara. My sister moves me in with three Christian guys. And uh, it was just a trip because these guys would just be putting the love on one another. And I was like, why are they hugging all the time? Like, you know, like we didn't have a few drinks before we started hugging. And uh, I was hanging out with my sister and all of her friends. And we're having fun and we're sober. And I'm like, this is, this is crazy. We're having a lot of fun and I'm sober, you know. But I still was partying a little in the city called Isla Vista. And um, when buddies would come up. But after about eight months, I went to this church service. I was just really tired. Um, again, but no one kind of knew. And so I go to this church service and during the worship, I just had this incredible encounter with the presence of God, where the spirit of God came over me, the peace of God, his joy, his love. And I hear God audibly speak to me. First time and last time I've ever heard him audibly, but he said, Jason, what are you living for? And in that moment, I was like, man, pfft. I'm done. I've been living my life for me and not for you. I knew he was real. I knew he was God. And so I went home. I tossed my two and a half foot bong, pipe, fridge full of beer, magazines. Man, I just cleaned house. And uh, I was free. It was the first time I was like, I am free, you know? And so, That's yeah, super amazing. thankful. And then from there, God brought my wife into my life. And now yeah. you were saying something like, you kind of have a little bit different. Like I, you have quite a few kids actually. So yeah, <laughs> what's this? And you're not, not the oldest guy, but you're pretty young here. How, yeah. how many kids do you have? Yeah, I have an eight year old, six year old, a four year old, a two year old, and my wife's pregnant. My God. Baby number five. Come on. Wow, wow. So you took the, you took the verse, you know, be fruitful, multiply pretty literally. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a literal verse. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a literal it's verse. above our doorway when we walk out. <laughs> my God, it's getting weird. Like, oh, should we expect you guys to be the next Duggar family? Uh, we'll see what we can do. My wife loves the Duggar, so. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, do you have, like, are you hoping to have, like, more kids after five? Or is it like, we just never know? We just read the word, and God was just like, go for it. And we never saw him put breaks on that oh verse. So we're just going to trust him. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's a lot of years that she spent being pregnant though now. I yeah, mean, my wife's been, what is that, morphing body months. shapes. <laughs> my oh goodness. my goodness. Yeah, she's, she's a trooper. She's an amazing woman. Well, tell us a little about what you guys now, you guys planned the church some years back and yeah. then something really kind of cool happened here. I, I was kind of reading a little bit about before we came in today, this whole idea of Jesus burgers, but totally. kind of brings up to speed about the area that you're in. It's a pretty interesting area that I, I wasn't very familiar yeah. with. Yeah, no, I live this is 20,000 people in a one square mile. So it's one of the most dense places for that small in the entire world. And uh, it's just a big old party town. UCSB is one of the um, leading schools in the nation for partying. And so the town is right next to it. So we have a, a house on the main party street. It's called Del Playa. And you can't walk or on that, I mean, you can't drive on that street. You could only walk uh, on it on Friday or Saturday nights. And so, you know, we have a house there and every Friday night we cook up these hamburgers known as Jesus Burgers. And uh, we didn't call them that. People started calling them those, but uh, yeah, we've been doing that. Mm -hmm. And so just to give people context of where your house is, yeah. you said it's right in the middle of the street. So it's all these partying, all this partying That's going right. on on both sides. Yeah, it's an incredible, so it's cool. a crazy street because you can play amplified music as loud as you want till 12 o'clock there. So you can only imagine the environment that creates. And that's not where my family lives, but that's right. like the church house. It's like the ministry That'd be great house. for the kids, though. They would probably like it. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about how Jesus Burgers got started. Yeah. Well, like I said, when I, when I came to the Lord, man, I was just like set on fire. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And so I was like, man, if people just heard about Jesus... If they just heard about this man, you know, like they would all come to know him, you know, his right. forgiveness, his love. And so I was like, dude, how are we going to reach this city? So I was like, let's put on a citywide barbecue. So we just put on this massive citywide barbecue. We did worship and we just started feeding people, you know, and we were just seeing like, wow, God's into this, you know, and it was crazy. I mean, the first one we hosted, the clouds were covering the whole sky. Like it was going to rain. It started to rain actually. And a few of us just got down on our face in, in a circle and just cried out. And as soon as we got done praying, the sky parted, literally not a single cloud when it was done. It was awesome. amazing, a miracle. And so from then on, we've just been 
continually uh, doing these hamburgers, you know, on Friday nights, yeah. So you're, you're giving out hamburgers and what, just any and everyone is able to stop by and just yeah. get, a, is it getting a free burger, essentially? Well, when it first started, people were hostile. They were like, what the heck are you doing? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Angry and like kind of not happy. But then we give them a hamburger, like, okay, is this poison? And we're like, no, man, we blessed it, dude. We prayed for this. This looks good. <laughs> you know, and then over the years, though, like, you know, we just have incredible favor now. Like, people just love that we're out there. And so, yeah, just a line starts and just people smell it. You know, you've had a few drinks, like, what's that, man? You know, and they come in and they get, they get fed. But we do everything, man. We just take care of the people on that night. So we'll take people to the bathroom. If people are throwing up, we'll give them rides home. I mean, we're praying for people. Yeah. We're just loving on people, you know. And people keep coming back, you know. There's regulars that we know by name. There's people I've seen come to the Lord through it. Uh, it's pretty remarkable, yeah. So on that night, are you trying to, like, are you trying to have a big church service? Nah, nah. Not we at just, all. you know, the Bible says this in the message Bible. It says that the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. So I love that about Jesus, dude. He just like, he moves into the neighborhood, you know, and that's what we want to do. We just want to be there available for people to love them, you know, and I see that throughout the gospels, like Christ was accessible. He was touchable. People were able to have conversations with him. You know, he wasn't just the elite. He was there with them. And so we're just in the midst of people and uh, yeah, just seeing what God's up to. And I think that's what's um, so cool about this too. This is a really creative way to yeah. serve and to be in ministry. And sure. you said, you know, kind of in the beginning, it wasn't easy. It was kind of hard, you know, when you guys first started, but you, you kept going and yeah. now you're like 12 years in. Yeah. Wild, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> what, so what is that, you know, what kind of encouragement can you give to people who maybe have an idea or have something, you know, that they may want to yeah. do, but, you know, just don't know how to go about it sure. or, you know, but they have this cra yeah. crazy idea. Well, everything starts in seed form. You know, and so we never want to despise the days of small beginnings, you know, and that was really what it was, man. The word says through faith and patience, you inherit the promises. And so people need to be loved, you know, and people do have ideas. And so I say run with those ideas, you know, go forward with them and realize like God's grace will sustain the idea if it's from him. You know, what's began in the flesh will have to be maintained in the flesh, but if it began in the spirit. The spirit will take it on, you know, and God's spirit has sustain this ministry. It makes no sense in the natural, but it's crazy. So this whole thing begins, you're yep. just going to serve people. But now, I mean, 10, 12 years later, yeah. now there's a book that's come out, Jesus sure. Burr. Yeah. Talk about the book and how, what the heart of that was all about. Yeah, well, I just love bragging about Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to make this man famous. And so this book is a collaboration of 20 plus testimonies, how people came to Jesus, how they got connected with the ministry and stories from that night. And then I write an intro all about it, kind of how it got going. Yeah. So, so share some of those stories. Give, I mean, like, because I think sometimes people, I think you're saying some key stuff here, because sometimes sure. like, people think about, all right, if I'm going to share my faith, yeah. I'm going to be Jesus. I've got to do this, this, and this. this I've got to give some kind of dissertation. I've got to give some kind of expository totally. message. Right. But you guys are just out there serving burgers. That's it. And yeah. people's lives are getting changed. Oh, so dude. Tell some stories about maybe someone. You minister the stomach, it opens up the heart. Hello. <laughs> Come on. But, uh. Um, well, one story, you know, and I actually share this one in the book, but I'll just stay with it, is uh, this guy was walking on the streets and he was in a wife beater and just like tattooed and just really hard, you know, really hard shaved head. And you can just tell like, oh, this guy probably likes to fight. But I just had this huge like love for him. You know, the agape love of God when you're just like, I don't know why I love you so much. I just love you, you know. Yeah. And so anyway, we go, we, we're out there and I'm just like, I got to go talk to this guy. And so I just take off after him. I'm like, God, you got to give me a word of knowledge or something. You know, I need something into this guy because you don't want to just approach a guy like that. Like, like, hey, you yeah. know, <laughs> but I get to him, I got nothing. I'm just like, uh, hey, you know, and I was just like, uh, I just want to tell you, God loves you. He's like, what? I was like, oh, this is not going to go good. You know, I'm like, God loves you, man. He's like, why do you tell me that? I'm like, I just really felt the love of God for you. And I want you to know that he loves you. And he grips his fist. And I'm like, oh, oh shoot, so I'm going to get him. Can enjoy my brother. That's right. Come on, I'm going to get blessed right now. <laughs> I'm going to get but right, blessed right, right now. When I think he's going to hit me, you know, he throws his arms around me in a bear hug, squeezes me so hard and whispers in my ear, hey, I was going to take my life tonight. Oh, my goodness. He's like, thank you for telling me that, you know, and he just starts wow. crying. His buddies are in getting a hamburger, so I was able to hang out with him and kind of talk to him. So that was amazing, you know, but we see so yeah. many stories, you know, so many different people, wow. so many lives that we're encountering out there. Yeah. It's remarkable. You know, we just, it's just love. Love never fails, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yep. just love. Well, yeah, what would you say to people that are watching right now? You know, a lot of people tune in. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's maybe people with ideas and whatnot, but what would you just say, man, if you could talk to people for a moment 
yeah. uh, on your heart regarding all of this? Well, I think we just really need to look for ways to bless people, yeah. you know, and ways to serve people. You know, the Bible says, consider others more important than yourself. <laughs> Simple, yeah. you know, but when you're invested in people and care for people, I mean, it opens their heart up, you know, and then you start listening to them about their story. Eventually they say, hey, what's your story? You know, and so, so often we want to talk and we want everyone to hear us. It's like, we need to learn to listen. We need to learn to care for others. And I think yeah. listening isn't necessarily going, hey, when do I get to talk next? Exactly. I think there's something yeah, really good about mm -hmm. it. You know, the Bible simply says this. I mean, Jesus in Luke chapter um, 19, he encounters this guy named Zacchaeus. And uh, all of a sudden he calls Zacchaeus out of a tree and then he goes to his house and everyone starts to mutter, man, hey, there's Jesus. He's a guest of sinners. Mm. I think sometimes we've got to ask ourselves a question, man. Like, when are we actually willing to be a guest of a sinner. Mm. And sometimes it's just that simple, stop, simple thought of just stepping out, being kindness to somebody, mm. that all of a sudden, man, opens up a whole world for change and transformation to take place. And I think what's happening here with Jesus Burger is absolutely profound. And I hope today, man, somebody's inspired, wow. yeah. you know what I mean, to be That's challenged, awesome. just to step out and be kindness. Yeah. I like that verse in Proverbs too, that I think is part of your book there, just about a gift opens up a door That's so often. That's right, it makes way for the giver and ushers them into the presence of the great, yep. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Awesome. Jason, thank you so much oh, for thanks. joining us. And people can get your book at books at Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm. And then also be sure to check out Jesusburgers.org for more information yeah. on their ministry. We'll be right back.